Hello, my name is Justin Stamford and I'm the HLTA in the Deaf Hub here at St John Fisher Catholic High School. At St John Fisher we specialise in supporting deaf learners in a mainstream setting. This training video has been put together so that we can share our good practices with other professionals across the city. Hopefully, by the end of the video, you'll have a little insight into how we best support our deaf learners with SEMH needs. At St John Fisher, we have around 800 students on roll, including our sixth form. If we compare this to other schools in the city, we are actually quite small, and this helps us form good, solid relationships with our students, something that is quite important when dealing with SEMH needs. Although we specialise in deafness, we have vast experience in supporting many different needs, including ADHD, autism, VI and MSI. Because of our specialism in supporting deafness, it means that all of our staff in school are trained on deaf awareness. This includes new starters and agency staff. Many of our classrooms are equipped with sound fields. We also have lots of resources available in school that will support deaf learners and we are more than happy to share these resources. If you're interested in any of those resources then please send me an email. During this training video, I will be mentioning deaf learners. Please remember, a lot of what I will be talking about will also relate to any child or young person. Covid affected everybody, whether you're deaf or hearing. Everybody suffered during the pandemic. All children and young people had long periods of missing out on education and community. Before Covid, it was recognised that children were struggling with their social, emotional and mental health in a multitude of ways from academic and social pressures to adverse childhood experiences and trauma. Covid may have exasperated existing challenges or created new challenges for young people. Hopefully some of the good practices that I'll be sharing in this video will help us to overcome some of the challenges felt even now by Covid. There are many intervention strategies that we can use to support students with their social, emotional and mental health. The important thing to mention here is that the higher tier services have had to raise the threshold to prioritise those with the highest levels of need. This is due to the overwhelming demand after Covid and also funding cuts. There are a range of SEMH interventions that can be put into place that make a real difference to the lives of our children and young people and many of these require a very low level of funding if any. Okay in front of us now we have a list of SEMH intervention strategies. What I'd like to do is just run through these intervention strategies one by one and just explain what they are and how they work. The first one we have there, in-school counsellors. Okay, so school-based counselling is a, it's a talking therapy in which a student is encouraged to discuss their feelings and emotions and behaviours within the context of a trusting therapeutic relationship. It's delivered in school by qualified counsellors in a one-to-one -one setting rather than groups. Next one on the list there, external psychotherapy organisations. These are um, external organisations or external agencies that will come in and work with schools. They are qualified professionals specialising in their field of practice. Um, examples of these agencies are educational psychologists, speech and language therapists, occupational therapists, um, the school nurse service, uh, CAMS, which is Child and Adult Mental Health Services. Then we have DEF CAMS, which is 
the deaf, child and adult mental health services. Um, we also have CHUMS, which is the mental health and wellbeing service. Please note that all referrals for all of these external agencies will need to go through your SENCO. Sometimes in school, a quiet room is hard to find, but it's important to have that space available when students need to talk or just to take 10 minutes to think quietly. Evidence shows that physical activity helps to improve the mental well-being of students. Setting up physical activities before school, break, lunch times or even after school can help make a massive difference. We need to be educating our children and young people on mental health. Um, on the next slide, I'm going to go into a bit more detail on that. So I'm just going to leave that one for a minute. Um, but yeah, on the next slide, I'm going to go into more detail on that one for you. Staff mentoring. OK, so. Training staff mentors in low level support roles can really benefit students in providing them with accessible, trusted members of staff with whom they can work to reduce the stresses in their life. Uh, a way they can do this is, for example, by just teaching them organisational skills. And the last one on the list there, nurture groups. So, nurture groups have a long history of supporting students with social, emotional and behavioural difficulties. When the government introduced the term SEMH, replacing the term SEBD, they acknowledged the close link mental health had with social, emotional and behavioural difficulties. Nurture, nurture groups use evidence-based approaches over a short term in small classes of around probably five to ten students. The aim of the groups is to teach social and emotional skills, thereby removing barriers to learning. Educating students on their own mental health is key to any successful SEMH intervention strategy in school. Students need to know how their brain works and the key symptoms that they may need support. Knowing which feelings are normal teenage worry and mood shifts and what is chronic anxiety and depression is vital for ensuring the right students receive the right support in the fastest possible time. Students will be better educated to seek support and report problems. They will also understand how to support each other and be a good friend in a time of need. Practically speaking, an SEMH friendly school can implement activities and programmes that promote skills for learning. This may include social skill groups to improve peer relationships, uh, mindfulness activities to enhance self-awareness and regulation, as well as consistent positive reinforcement to bolster self-esteem. In our school, we use PSHE lessons to educate on mental health. We also have focus days, which incorporates education on mental health. We also address mental health in assemblies and we celebrate awareness days, like for example, World Mental Health Day to let students know that they're not alone. Deaf children are more vulnerable during times of transition and change because they may lack the vital skills they need to navigate new experiences. And again, we're not just talking primarily about deaf students here. There are other students with different needs that will also be affected by transition and change. Transitioning from primary to secondary school is a particularly significant change for children. Learning about change and how to cope with it will help them with this particular transition and prepare them for many other challenges and changes that they will face in their life. Now, I have made another video on supporting positive transitions of learners with SEM. If this is something that you want more detail on, then please check out the video which is on our website. So now, I just want to remind you of the importance of planning for triggers and how we can do this. I think the key thing to remember that it's important to identify future students and start the transition process as early as possible. You know, potentially even maybe even in year five, 
start talking about it. We need to meet the students and we need to develop good relationships early on. We need to make memories. Yeah, use visuals. Um, iPads are great for you know going around the school, taking pictures of you know teachers. Um, just think when when students come from primary, they have one teacher. When they come to secondary, they're going to be having you know 10, 12, 13 teachers. Some of those key teachers, they might you know you might want to take some photographs of them so they can take them back to their setting and they can look at the photographs and it can remind them of you know what's what's what happened on the day when they went. We need to create links. Uh, we need to do this by involving families, you know, bringing the families into school to visit as well as the students so that the families can get involved. There needs to be, you know, not just one visit, but lots of visits. And we're not just talking about visiting the secondary school they're going to. Maybe one or two members of staff can go and visit the student in their setting and see how they are, you know, how, how they do things in their setting just to create that relationship. Use other students. We can use other students to, to help mentor any new students. And that's another key point to remember. Something which I'm going to talk about in the next couple of slides is a program we do, um, which can help you set up peer support. Taking part in peer support training means that children are better able to help their peers when they ask for support. The training offers a safe environment for children to learn active listening skills with support to find their own solutions to challenges they might be experiencing. Peer support is about giving children and young people somewhere to go if they need help and support. This is particularly important for our SEN students. In school, we have used a program called Buddy Up. You can see the picture there in front of you. Um, this has been created by the NDCS, the National Deaf Children's Society. Although this program is tailored towards deaf students, it actually can be tweaked and it can be used with any student. It will involve the student mentors completing a six week course with a member of staff leading the course. Each session lasts an hour and there are six sessions. It's all very self-explanatory. All of the resources and everything you need is actually in the in the Buddy Up book, which can be um, obtained from the NDCS. Um, once these sessions are complete, then these students are fully trained mentors and can offer peer support. Okay, some people might ask why set up a peer support group? Well, in front of you there is a list of all the reasons um, why to set up the Buddy Up program. This has actually come straight out of the uh, Buddy Up program itself. Um, I'll now give you a few minutes just to read over those. Here are some of the principles for co-developing a peer support program. The student mentors need to take ownership of the program. For it to work, they need to be part of producing the program. You need to remember to choose your mentors carefully. The mentors will have a level of responsibility, quite a high level of responsibility. And this, this really does need to be considered. You need to create strong relationships. Your mentors need to be able to talk to you at any time. And this way they can develop their skills on relationships with their mentees. Make sure mentors are adequately trained and supervised so that they feel safe and supported. Don't let them start mentoring until you've completed the training on the Buddy Up program. The Buddy Up program itself is very self-explanatory. Um, it tells you um, exactly how to do it. It's all in the book. 
each lesson is split down. All the resources are in there. You just need to do a bit of photocopy and a bit of cutting. Um, but it's actually quite self-explanatory and quite easy to follow the program itself. Okay, I'd just like to talk about some statistics that I found on the internet. Um, actually, I found it on the NDCS website. Uh, it's a reliable source. Deaf students are four times more likely to experience mental health problems than other children. Uh, deaf students are more likely to be in mainstream education with no or little contact with other deaf peers. And it says there's 76% are in mainstream schools where there is no specialist provision. Now this doesn't count for our school because we have the deaf hub. But if you think about most mainstream schools, even across the city, um, a lot of the schools do have deaf students in the schools. Um, and there is you know, no specialist provision given there. Deaf students are vulnerable to isolation because of this. Um, also because of this we have bullying and then that leads to poor self-esteem without the right support important to remember that. Um, it's also important to remember there that deaf students are more likely to be discriminated against and all of these factors will contribute to deaf students needing more support with their SEMH. Now it's always good to talk. We need to be encouraging our children to talk about and name emotions, feelings, theirs and others. Now deaf children may well lack vocabulary to talk about their own emotions and feelings and they may struggle to understand how they feel or how others feel and not again not just deaf students we have, we have students you know with other SEN needs particularly autism, um, ADHD they fall under this category as well. In school we have um, trained emotional literary support assistants. Now, an ELSA, which is what we call them for short, ELSA, ELSA, okay, these are emotional literary support assistants in school. Um, and this is a recognised training course which is aimed specifically at teaching assistants or, or other specialist school roles. ELSAs are specialists with a wealth experience of working with children and young people. ELSAs are trained and they're regularly supervised by educational psychologists. Um, the course itself tends to be, I think, about six days, just over a week, and it covers many areas from emotional li literacy to active listening. Um, ELSAs must be supervised regularly by the educational psychologists who train them. This supervision is key to good practice and allows the ELSA to bring up any problems with a group of other ELSAs along with the educational psychologists. Um, it's important that ELSAs work within their scope of practice and only cover things that they are trained to cover. Any concerns out of their scope of practice should be discussed with the educational psychologist and potentially referred to any outside agencies through the SENCO. Okay, ELSAs, or the ELSA relationship is, uh, is quite a good one with the student. ELSAs are warm, kind and caring people who want to make children and young people feel happy in school and to reach their potential socially, emotionally and academically. They understand the barriers to learning that some children and young people might have and they can help them with this. They support the children and young person's emotional development and help them cope with life's challenges. ELSAs would also help children and young people to find solutions to problems they might have. It's important to remember that an ELSA is not there to fix problems, but is there to help them find their own solutions and offers that important support to a young or young person or child. Relationships are key in helping children and young people to feel safe and nurtured and ELSAs is about creating a reflective space for the child and young person. Okay, in front of you now is a list of what areas does the ELSA help with? What can they do? Uh, I'll just give you a couple of minutes to read through those. Um, there's a range of, of, of different areas there that 
the Elsa can help with. And you can see the link there between the Elsa and the SEMH. So when it comes to referrals, um, normally it would be the Senko referring. Sometimes the parents might ask about it. Um, class teacher might also speak to the Senko potentially and the child might even find out about it from another child and, and, and ask if they they could be part of it um, then there's always the uh, the potential of an outside agency coming in and, and saying that an Elsa needs to be referred Okay, I just want to touch on the Healthy Minds program. This is a CPD accredited training program which is run by the NDCS online. I believe it's a six hour um, workshop. Um, the key themes for this would be um, exploring what a healthy mind is and why it's important, ways to develop good emotional vocabulary, identifying support mechanisms and networks, understanding identity and owning and managing deafness. So if you have some deaf students in your school, this may well be a good program to get your your staff onto. Um, it can all be booked through the NDCS website. It's important to look out for changes in behaviour. Um, changes in behaviour are often an indication of things not being right. Um, in front of me now I've got, an, I've got indicators of, of different difficulties and we have children and young people with uh, may display passive behaviours such as anxiety, low mood, being withdrawn, avoiding risks, unable to make choices, low self-worth, being isolated, uh, refusing to accept praise, failure to engage, poor personal presentation, daydreaming, unable to make or maintain friendships, um, speech anxiety, you know, reluctant to speak even in a one-to-one -one setting, um, task avoidance. And then we have um, other students that may display active behaviours. It's important to, to look out for changes in these. In these. Some of these could be like challenging behaviours um, restlessness or, or the opposite, overactivity, non-compliance, mood swings, um, impulsivity, physical aggression, verbal aggression, perceived injustices towards themselves, disproportionate reaction to situations, um, difficulties with changes and transitions, absconding, eating issues, lack of empathy, lack of personal boundaries and poor awareness of personal space. Now it's, it's important to know your students first of all and to also look for any of these uh, indicators in behaviours that you didn't notice before that are coming in. These could, um, you know, these could be indicators that there's a problem with SEMH or difficulties there with SEMH. Support children with relationships and belonging. Positive student relationships are fundamental to success. When students feel supported, they're more likely to engage in learning and have better academic outcomes. Plus, when students have positive interactions with teachers and other members of staff, they have fewer behavioural problems. The relationships in a child or young person's life are very important to their well-being and development. In a school setting, this means their relationship with school staff and with each other should be nurtured and supported. Schools should ensure that children and young people feel that they belong to and are a valued part of a school community. Students should feel that their relationships with the adults in the school are positive, consistent, which is a good keyword there, 
and based on trust and mutual respect. Schools should also help children and young people develop healthy relationships with their peers through good quality relationship education, an effective whole school bullying policy and through peer support programmes such as the one we spoke about earlier, the Buddy Up programme. Generally, for a child to flourish and achieve in school, they need to feel that they belong and are a valued part of the school community. Creating an environment in which children and young people feel they belong, feel valued and feel cared for is a whole school responsibility driven by SLT. It includes, for example, uh, leadership and policies, but also involves all members of staff using their relationships to build that sense of belonging through every interaction. Positive relationships in the classroom, school, that are built on trust, kindness, safety and security are an important tool for change, linked not only to better child wellbeing, but also to better educational performance. We need to make sure that we have good um, school communication um, with parents at home, um, good relationships with families. We can achieve this through uh, parents' evenings, um, parent consultations, annual reviews, also a good, a good time to, to build relationships. And sometimes we can have um, coffee mornings or coffee afternoons to get families in to just have a little chat and build those relationships. The next couple of slides are a recap on what I've just said. I'll just give you a couple of minutes just to go over those before we move on to the, uh, the next part. Here we have a, a photograph, have a of, photograph of, of six of our students, six of our students from, um, from, um, from last year's Year 7 last cohort. Year's year seven cohort. Um, this is a picture which is taken on the NDCS Roadshow, road which is, um, which is um, a, bus a bus that travels around the UK, around the UK um, um, which is funded by the, NDCS. Funded by the NDCS. Once on site, it transforms into, transform into, sort of, into a big room. A big room. Um, and the great thing about um, this, the is, they offer, about this um, is they offer lots of different um, workshops. Different workshops. Um, and one of the workshops, um, which workshops I thought was quite good, was quite good. could help, could help. Um, with this, um, with with this PowerPoint this, here, with is the, the Who Am I Deaf Who Identity I Workshop. Identity workshop. Um, um, this was a workshop was designed, a workshop to, improve designed to improve deaf young people's, deaf young people's self-esteem, self -esteem, so, they so they feel comfortable with their deafness and confident deafness about being independent about in the hearing in world. In the, hearing world. The, aim was to, the aim was to get, was to, uh, get um, young deaf people um, thinking, deaf about, their people identity, thinking about their identity, their achievements, their interests, achievements and ambitions, interests and ambitions, and how their deafness plays how part deafness plays in who they are. And then we sort of, as a group, they discussed what they had in common with other Deaf students, deaf students and what also made them different. Um, and, um, and a great thing about this as well was on the day, on the day, we invited we quite a lot of students, students from, from different schools, from different schools, um, and they all, we all got um, together. We all, we all got um, together. Um, most of the students were deaf. There were some, there, there were some workshops there. There were hearing workshops. Most, I would say, eighty percent of the students there were deaf, and there were deaf workshops. Next time, next time we get the roadshow in, the road we will in, be inviting other schools, we'll be inviting other with schools, other students that are deaf to, to come and, and, come and, and, attend, and attend that, that which, is to, which is something to to think about. To think about. We've only really sort of touched the sides on uh, SEMH in schools. There's so much more to, to know and so much more to understand. And please don't just take my word for it. Um, there are lots and lots of online resources, lots of websites, and also lots of books. These are some of the selection here that you can see in front of you, some of the selection that I found on Amazon um, for books that, that relate to what we've been talking about today. So my suggestion is if, you, if this is something you're interested in and you want to improve on, and possibly maybe get yourself one of these books.
So on this page, what I've done is I've added some links for you for any external agencies that have been used today um, or any external agencies which, which can be useful to you moving forward. Um, just point out a couple there, the uh, www.semh.co.uk. There's a lot of useful information on there. There's a lot of resources that, you can, that are available to print out. Uh, the NDCS there, they are the people that have the Buddy Up program. Um, they also have quite a lot of useful information on there and they, they update their, their information quite a lot on there. Um, I've also put a link there to uh, the Neengate School. Now, the Neengate School are the, the hub for SEMH in Peterborough. So they specialise in SEMH. Now they have resources on their website that can be used. They also have resources in, in school and they've got um, specialist HLTAs, teachers there, that are also available to ask, answer any questions. And last but not least there, I've put a link for um, the Peterborough um, local offer sites. Um, on here, you can get all information, anything SEN, which you need for locating Peterborough. So that's the link there for the uh, peterborough.gov.uk. And now we come to the end. I hope the, the video today has been informative for you and you've learnt something. If you do have any questions, then you can email me on uh, justin.stamford at St. John Fisher School org uk now is the time to fill out the feedback link that i sent you with the powerpoint if you could please do that and, and send it off so that we can get some feedback so we can prove our training for next time um so yeah hope it was good for you thank you very much for listening